Hello everyone and welcome to round 5 of the uh, RR League's GTR 3 Championship live from Zolder in Belgium. We are here for the fifth round of the championship and uh, well just past the halfway point of the, uh, the series. Last race was also in Belgium at the legendary Spa Francorchamps circuit and there we had a 95 minute race, the first endurance race of this season. Uh, and we will also end this series with an endurance race at the VLN Nordschleife layout. But uh, that's all for uh, in a couple of weeks. Now we are at, uh, well, the uh, fast and undulating Zolder circuit hosting uh, a variety of racing series in its history and uh, currently still hosting um, Blampin GT3 sprint series. So uh, these cars and this track go well together and it's a challenge for the drivers. It's completely different to Spa Francochamps and um, we will see uh, some different cars and different drivers at the top of the standings uh, quite possibly. So with uh, eight minutes left in qualifying, let's have a look at uh, the current situation in the uh, championship. Let's have a look at the standings. On the left we have the Drivers' Championship, where we have uh, Peter Bakus still leading the Drivers' Championship after a very good start to the season. Uh, but in the last few races, Robert Horvat has uh, taken all the points he can get, taking poles and race wins and stringing those together. And he's now within five points of Peter Bakus. And they're both quite a long way in front of Ralph Arella, Vlastimir Lukas and uh, Nemanja Manolovic, for example, which are all very bunched together for sure. As you can see, we had 40 drivers already participating in this championship. So uh, we will see some uh, epic and uh, very hectic racing here at the uh, very small Zolder circuit, very narrow, uh, not easy to pass, was what we heard on the forums as well. So uh, that is something very to keep in mind. Um, then the team's championship, there it's still let's kick some butts racing at the top of the standings. That's uh, Robert Horvat, no sorry, Peter Bakus and Nemanja Manolovic closely followed by HM Racing and then uh, 77. Uh, not, not very closely followed, uh, I must add. They're quite a long way in front, but uh, can they keep it? They, they need to keep those good results coming because we're uh, only halfway through the season, so any, uh, any bad result from either of those two drivers can uh, put those other teams up there with them for sure. And then for the remainder of the season, I already teased it, we end the season with a uh, endurance round at the Nordschleife VLM layout. But uh, in two weeks time, first we travel to Portugal to do a uh, Portimao circuit. A uh, great circuit for us, always providing some good racing. And then we return to uh, the Netherlands for the Zandvoort Grand Prix. Um, the race of today will be a 60 minutes standard race. And uh, next round at Portimao will be a sprint race, uh, two sprint races. And then we have another 60 minute race at Zandvoort. And then a 95 <laughs> epic finale to this season at the Nordschleife. So I already mentioned last race at Spa. It was Robert Horvat taking a commanding win. Um, look at that race time, he was. Um, well, 25 seconds in front of Vlastimir Lukas. Uh, it led every lap of the race, took pole position. So a very dominant win by Robert Horvat, followed by Lukas and Peter Bakus taking some, uh, some good points there as well. We saw some great racing throughout the 95 minutes. It was a real challenge for all of the drivers. And um, that will be no different today, but the, the, uh, the mindset of the drivers will be a little bit different as this is only a 60 minute race, a bit shorter. Uh, in the 95 minute race um, there was some uh, planning and strategy, meaning that uh, the drivers needed to take care of their tires, because uh, tires here last about half an hour 
until they start to go off badly. So 95 minutes was just pushing those boundaries and, and we saw some drivers um, really uh, taking that into account and, and taking it easy in those opening laps, which, uh, which was quite important to, to get a good result. Uh, there was time enough to make up lost ground and uh, that's what happened in the end. So as the drivers just received their briefing by our admin Simon Fillingham, who is also uh, driving in these series, um, we uh, can have a look at the other series that rrleagues.com is hosting because we are not only hosting Race Room Racing Experience, GT3 Racing, no, um, we have different series running at the moment. We have a season 21, which is uh, what we are witnessing today. That's uh, GTR3 in Race Room Racing Experience, which is our main sim at the moment. Then we have the uh, FR2 Championship next Sunday. That's season 22 in the Open Wheelers, also in Race Room Racing Experience. And then the first R Factor 2 series at rrleagues.com will be next week on Wednesday, same time as. Uh, as the GTR3 races DTM, uh, also eight rounds in R Factor 2. And then on Sunday, in two weeks' time, we have the WTCC door-to-door uh, -door racing on Sunday evening. So those are the four official series that we are hosting. They are um, almost all fully booked, but if you want to join, make sure to check out our website and uh, check if there are any spots free. Um, if you're not that serious but you just want to get clean racing in a friendly environment and get to know the community better, then there's uh, no better alternative than joining our race club, which are um, fun races in race room racing experience with free content in, uh, in that sim or content part of the starter pack, so you will not have to buy uh, many different items and spend a lot of money to start racing with us. And the next race is on the 18th, so uh, next Thursday that will be the GTR2 class racing around Brems Hatch Indy, so a small circuit, some uh, nice cars, so make sure to, to join that. There are many many regulars in our series that uh, join the fun on those race club days and it's a perfect way to get to know everybody, get, get your, find your way around our website, our discord channels, etc. And, uh, and get ready for that next uh, series that will be starting in, in January with our two sims at the moment. So uh, make sure to check that out and join us there. there are, uh, there's a minimum of requirements to get into race club for the official series. There's a bit more planning and uh, signing up etc to do so uh, make sure, sure to check that out so and then we're getting ready for qualifying in this Zolder race let's have a quick look at uh, the practice standings Pavel Nyiri is uh, was at the front of the field but uh, times are a bit messed up at the moment it seems Anyway, uh, Pavel Niri followed by Robert Horvat and then Alejandro Forero, a, uh, a new driver, new sign up to this series and uh, very much on the pace in the Bentley. So very nice to see as we are riding with Robert Horvat now for 10 minutes. So let's uh, have a look at someone else. For example, Nedo Vili, also one of our new drivers who joined in the FR2 series uh, two weeks ago. And now also racing in the GTR3 series with us. We currently have 27 drivers on the server. And uh, well, we have a couple of seconds before qualifying starts. A 15 minute qualifying session followed by a 16 minute race. So the question is, will Robert Horvat take another pole? Or will someone else uh, take that those points away from him? If you have any questions, any uh, people you want us to focus on, just let us know in the chat box. I will try to uh, have a look from time to time and, uh, and focus on, uh, on your questions. And it's Pavel Nieri out of the pits as the first driver, so uh, nice that we can uh, follow him. Driver info 
and the standings once again. And we're riding with Pavel Nieri as the first driver. Let's quickly have a look at the track as the guys make their way uh, in their outlap. So a um, quite a small circuit with uh, with some difficult turns, turn one and uh, and two. That first uh, first sector always causes some issues in real life racing. Uh, it's it's very open wide that first corner, but then it gets tighter and tighter, and you need to uh, get your braking right for turn two as well to keep as much momentum as you can through the canal bucket and then. Uh, Lucien Bianchi Bocht is a very important one, leading on to one of the best passing opportunities on the track, the Kleine Chicane. Uh, so if you get a good run out of the Lucien Bianchi Bocht, not sure of course, then uh, there are some opportunities in the chicane, but uh, it will require some uh, cooperation from uh, the driver that is being passed. Then we have the Sacraments Helling, where the car goes light when you plummet back down into the Villeneuve chicane, also a passing opportunity. And then it's uh, it's quite tight until you get to the Bolderberg Bocht. That's a uh, hairpin where you could where we could see some passes and then uh, down to another left-right chicane, the Jackie X Bocht, back to uh, the start to finish line. So uh, about uh, one one uh, one minute thirty second lap here around the Zolder circuit as the Pavel Nieri has started his first flying lap. So uh, let's have a look and let's see how he gets through that first uh, through the Kleine Chicana up the hill and then back down. Getting your braking right and setting that, uh, that right left chicane up is, is very important. I think the McLaren should be working quite well here in these uh, in these technical sections. It's always a good car when uh, when you need some good uh, good mechanical and aero grip. So uh, certainly one to watch as uh, Pavel Nieri makes his way to the final chicane. Let's see what his time was. I think it was a 29.2 was the fastest time in practice, so let's see uh, if they are able to manage that. Uh, quite sure he could really go below that. Uh, 29... 30.3. Uh, uh, Ralph Arella, our number one ranked driver, goes a bit quicker with a 30.2. So uh, let's see how that pace evolves. But uh, well, around uh, low 30 is what you want to be doing right now in the first uh, in the opening stages of qualifying. Many of the times coming in, Arella still at the top. Uh, let's see if we have anyone Starting his lap, yes. Here we have a uh, Nemanja Manolovic through turn one. Very tricky, as I said. Quite wide, but then you need to take that one line. And here, this braking is a, uh, a passing opportunity as well. You want to stay as wide as you can to uh, carry speed through this section and into the braking for. Uh, Fast sweeping right hander coming up to the chicane. Gets past a green sector for Manolovic, then hard braking for the left right chicane. As I said, a passing opportunity, but here, as you can see, there's not much room to go side by side here. So people will have to uh, be respectful and cooperate a bit. Then turn into a purple sector, and Arella setting at 29.7. What can Manolovic do? He's uh, mostly at the top of the field, so let's stay with him and see where he ends up at the moment. Bakus setting a, uh, a time half a second off Arella, so Arella very much setting the pace at the moment. Horvat is down in 7th, almost 1 second behind. And we'll purple sector for Manolovic. This is 
very difficult. You want to get on the power as soon as you can, but it's uh, it's not easy to get it right. Horvat into second with uh, two tenths to Arella and Manolovic puts himself in third position. So uh, things are starting to heat up in this qualifying session. Tomas Truha in 14th and setting a uh, purple first sectors 27.5. Was a bit untidy, a bit uh, took a bit too much curb there, bouncing around. Let's stay with him in the BMW. Nicely through the chicane, and now you want to feather the throttle here as much as you can. Get on it uh, as soon as you can. Through this, uh, yeah, very very technical section, then hard braking for the hairpin. And get on the power as soon as you can. Nieri puts himself in second position, one tenth of Arella, so very, very close at the top. The top six within half a second, top five within uh, four tenths of a second. What can Thomas Struer do? He's in 14th at the moment and he stays there. So, uh, not a better time for Thomas Struer. And we also have Valentino Rossi. in the Audi going through the last chicane. He's in 22nd at the moment. Can he improve? He improves to 20th position. And we are halfway through the session. Ross Hockey then also uh, finishing his lap. He's sending personal bests in uh, first and second sectors seems to be slowing down so that will not uh, not be a good lap for him it's still Arella from Niri and then Horvat Manolovic championship leader Bakus is in seventh position so also uh, something to keep an eye on Niri now very very uh, close and he goes pole yes 34 thousandths of a second in front of Arella uh, just in time for that so uh, as I said the McLaren working well here on this track. And uh, the number six McLaren not uh, not stopping, so he keeps uh, keeps going. Then Manolovic also at 27.5 in the first sector. So uh, very, very close. Robert Holva not showing up on my uh, purple sector list at the moment. I see drivers uh, left and right on the track making space for uh, other drivers. Manolovic, purple sectors there, so let's see if he can improve. Horvat goes for pole position, so he was doing a uh, good sector, he was showing personal bests, but uh, maybe did a good last sector, so he's three tenths up on Nieri now. Alejandro Forero goes up into fourth position, and here's Manolovic, will he improve as well? He's in fifth now, and he goes straight to the line, puts himself in second position in the BMW. So a very good run by Manolovic, this will be a very, very hard fought qualifying session for sure. A lot of drivers in the pits at the moment it seems. Here is Petr Peck, he was uh, second in the opening round at Road America, 19th at the moment so he will, uh, will, want, will be wanting to uh, improve on that for sure. So the top 9 within a second, uh, I'm quite sure that will get a bit tighter still. Then, uh, the range will still open. Petr Peck not on his fastest lap at the moment. Alejandro Forero really uh, really setting good times there. He's down to sixth uh, being passed by David Dore. But a uh, purple first sector and then a green second sector. Will he improve from his sixth position? He has uh, 
only a couple of thousands of seconds to make up Andorre. And he repasses him, he's only four tenths behind Robert Horvat at the moment. And here we have Niri and Horvat right behind him. He's on his outlap also letting the other drivers through now. As you can see many 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 cars here on the track, 27 drivers. And that's quite a lot for such a small, uh, small track as Zolder. My home track to be honest, the track that is closest to my, uh, my home here in Belgium. Get some clean air. Uh, the back is having green sectors again. Let's, let's follow them around. It's important to note that in uh, race room racing experience, the timer goes to zero. When the timer goes to zero, uh, the, the session will stop. So we have three minutes and 20 seconds left in this qualifying session and then it is over so uh, people that are not out of the pits now should be exiting very very soon to uh, be able to still make a lap so it's Horvat from Manolovic and Niri Peter Peck puts himself up into P18 Max Haas we uh, saw in the last few races very uh, very eventful very tight racing by Max Haas also doing very well in our DTM championship so uh, top 10 position for him at the moment 1.1 seconds behind Robert Horvat but uh, let's have a look at Pavel Neri he did a f best first sector Nemanja Manolovic is in the pits so he will not be uh, he will not be setting a faster lap, so can Niri take the battle to Robert Horvat for pole position? At the moment, Ralph Arella is also going faster. Robert Horvat also setting fastest time, so the times will still come down. A 29.2 was not too far off with my uh, opening estimate. Pavel Niri got a, uh, a cut, it seems, because he's not setting any times on the... Uh, this lap, Arella up into third position, so he passes Pavel Nieri for third spot in the second row of the grid. Robert Horvat crossing the line now, can he extend his gap? Yes he can, he takes another tenth out of Manolovic, so two tenths are in front now. And then we have Radek Pavlacek also uh, setting some good times, he's in uh, ninth position now. Can he improve on that? Niri is setting a uh, fastest first sector, so we'll, uh, we'll have a look at him very, very soon. Pavel Hutnik as well going faster. And that's Pavlacek up into sixth position. So a good run for him, another McLaren in, uh, in that top six. So great for him, and let's have a look at Pavel Niri. Purple sectors first and second, can he take pole? from Robert Horvat. I think he is the closest contender. Yes he is. He has 50 seconds left to go. So let's see what he can do. Uh, the it's only Robert Horvat on the track and then it's uh, Vlastimir Lukas, David Dore in 7th and 8th that are still running. So um, let's see what Pavel Miri can do. The run down to the line and it's 29.3 putting himself in second position 77 thousandths of a second off of Robert Horvat who uh, I presume will still take pole David Dorne is a one of the uh, guys still running but not setting a time at the moment so that will not uh, not bring anything then Daniel Badcock not faster in the uh, second sector so that is it for this qualifying session it's Robert Horvat from Pavel Nieri and then Nemanja Manojlovic so uh, the drivers will be getting ready for the race and uh, I am too we have one minute to go
so the guys are gridding up. We have Robert Horvat on the left in the red and black Mercedes. We have Pavel Nieri on the right in the orange McLaren. Who will get away the best? And uh, Pavel Nieri has the inside line for the first corner. So can he make anything happen there? As I said, always some action into turn one here on this track. So uh, let's see what happens there. And off we go. It's a uh, good start by Niri. I think he will take first position into the first corner. They are side by side. But uh, that puts Robert Horvat on the inside for turn two. And Robert is uh, back in the lead indeed. Can Niri get a good run? out of a uh, out of this uh, fast sweeper and make a move into the chicane no he doesn't so uh, normal braking there a little bit further down the field everything is still clean Martin Ross left in 11th position in the 912 Porsche over the crest Position change that's uh, like Metcalf right behind. Let's go a bit further down, some bumping and riding. Pavel Hutnik, that's a bad lead joint. Pavel is lucky not to take more drivers with him on that one. Martin Roslev, not Manuel Milanovic, is uh, in third position. And Martin Roslev is very close, so here we see the whole field streaming past going through the chicane. Robert Horvat will finish lap one in first position, followed by a whole stream of cars. There's not been too many incidents, it seems, in the first lap. Rosaki is in last position at the moment, but he's uh, not very far away from that race lead. Looking at Ralph Arella, he's in fourth position. Can he make, uh, make any moves here? This corner is very key. Getting getting through that cleanly and, and, and in the best way possible is, is paramount to making any move stick here into the chicane. And there's uh, that's not happening at the moment. It's the second spot. Further down, it's Vlastimir Luka. So it's, it's the usual suspects. He's following, followed by uh, Peter Bacchus. So uh, it's still very, very close. But uh, if Horvat takes the win, and that's a very, very early to say, and uh, Bacchus only takes the sixth, I think we have a new championship. As I said, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to ask us in the chat and try to find out as soon as possible. The battle for the lead is very close, but it's close all the way down the field in the 13th spot. Pavel Moravik is having a battle with Max Haas and Greg Metcalf. Finishing lap two of the race. So we get at the front half a second only. Very, very close and Ross Hockey giving last position to Paul Hudson, but still very close for all those guys and Nestor Vili now going down to last position and as you can see it's still very close here at the uh, far back end of the grid. Oh and Vili gets on the power a bit too early out of turn one and spins it into the barriers. He's lucky uh, he's able to continue. Back to the front then, Pavel Niri is not letting Robert Horvat run away with it. Uh, he, he did that a bit at Spa, eking out that gap uh, in the opening stages and then keeping that in uh, a bit of a battle, let's say, uh, in his Red Bull days. But uh, not the case at the moment. We have our uh, top 10 within 10 seconds still. nice to see and that's all also something that our uh, pre-race briefing um, 
is about. Just try not to cause any big incidents in the first lap. That way everybody will stay bunched up after the opening laps and the racing is that much better and that much more intense. And that's what we want to see as viewers and what we want to experience as racers, of course. Simon Fillingham going for the inside on David Dor. No, he doesn't. Just showed his nose, but uh, not getting it done right there. Struha in the BMW, he's closely following Petr Peck, 16th and 17th position there. position I just saw there so uh, still very, very close in the Vlastimil Lucas in fifth and uh, being held up maybe a little bit by Ralph Arella let's ride on board with Lucas in the uh, Godzilla in the Nissan GTR as he finishes up his lap uh, around the super circuit Let's see what that looks like from his perspective. He has Arella in front, Bankos behind. So, uh, those are two very strong drivers, but he's, uh, he's amongst those strong RRL drivers. We have a uh, driver's ranking for the last 20 races and also a ranking for the last 5 races. And he's always up there with the top guns. So, uh, very good uh, driver, Vlastimi Lucas. Arella getting a bit away from him now, it seems, breaking for the chicane. Pavel Niri is as close as ever to Robert Horvat in front. So, uh, things are bound to happen. Tricky here, the chicane getting it right and then getting onto the power here. In keeping it turned in, keeping it tidy through this section, not going onto the grass on the left is uh, is very important and very difficult in these GT3 beasts. Good, uh, good middle sector and last sector from uh, Lucas. Got a lot closer again to uh, Ralph Arella. showing up here on my screen, breaking for the hairpin. He has Valentino Rossi right in front. Oh, he cuts, cuts across a little bit. Looks like I might have a little bit of a problem. He lets his teammate Nikolai Hartup past. He was a bit uh, weaving on the straight, trying to correct his steering inputs. So, uh, something wrong with the car from that hit from Valentino Rossi. So back to the TV cam as there was uh, some action there by Manolovic. He's on, on the gearbox of Pavel Mieri. Gives Robert Horvath a little bit of breathing space. This will be a big priority. They have to try and take that win away from Robert Horvath. Because if they don't, he will uh, have I think four wins in a row in this championship. And that's a uh, very dominant performance for sure. However, it's all still very, very close. And our top 10 is uh, just outside of 10 seconds apart. So, uh, speed advantages are not very big at the moment. There's a bit of a gap behind Peter Bakus in the orange BMW, but uh, that's about it. Let's uh, quickly go through the field and uh, have a look at, uh, at the general uh, 
the standings. So it's Robert Horvat followed by Pavel Nieri. Very closely followed by Manolovic, Arella and Lucas. Sorry, that was a bit of an epileptic experience. Then we have Peter Bakus behind Radek Pavlacek uh, with a bit of a gap, followed by Alejandro Forero in the Bentley. Then Daniel Batcock trying to catch up on that group together with Morten Rosleff rounding up our top 10. Then we have Greg Metcalf with Max Haas in the two green cars. Uh, they're, uh, they've had their fair share of battles in the last few races. Then we have Simon Finnegan in 13th spot, David Dorn. 14th, those are all names that you would uh, expect in the top 10, but there can only be 10 drivers. Patrick Peck in 15th, making his way uh, up from his starting position. And Pavel Hitnik 16th, and then 17th is for Jazz Forsberg, followed by Thomas Sturak in the BMW, and Pavel Moravec. Valentino Rossi, we saw that battle around May, is... Uh, Back behind him in the Corvette, followed by Ross Hockey in another Corvette. Another Corvette for Nikolai Hartup. Sabal Charbertini in 24th position. And Paul Hudson in the 4GT in 25th. And Nedo Vili in 26th. We have one retirement. That's Stefan Riedl in the BMW Alpina. Unfortunately, so uh, he is out of the race and in the garage. So that's your standings. Still everything very, very close and bunched up. As it now seems that uh, Minolovic is starting to drop back a little bit from, uh, from that top two. And he seems to be... He might be holding up Arella. Lucas and Bagus. Lucas gets very, very close to Ralph's back of the car. Also worth a mention, uh, Ralph Arella is our number one ranked driver. But uh, it has been a long-standing goal of Robert Horvat to uh, dethrone him for a while. And by uh, stringing all those wins together, He's, uh, he's doing well, but one bad result can uh, throw all of that away as you will carry it with you for the next 20 races. Uh, it's always counted on the last 20 races, those standings, so uh, not very easy to, uh, to get to the top and to stay at the top if you are uh, at the top. So. Very, uh, very nicely done by uh, Ralph Arella already uh, eight weeks, if I remember correctly, at the top of those standings. Here we have a nice overview of that top ten, or top eight, let's say, uh, until Ferrero is all in one shot. And the gap at the front still within one second. We can visually see the gap to Manolovic is growing a little bit, but uh, still one fourth through this race. And, uh, there's nothing between the drivers. Very good driving, very high driving standards, very good consistency, and that's what's important in these. Well, one hour races are not very short, and uh, it's consistency that you need to, uh, to get into that top 10 and not make any big mistakes. As was mentioned before, it's uh, very difficult to pass, so uh, we will not see many uh, crazy passes here. There are some opportunities, but uh, you need you need a small mistake from the driver in front to really make it stick, and you need some respect and cooperation. Uh, but that's also what what our league is uh, is built on. So uh, I'm sure if a move is on, that space will be given and uh, respect will be shown by these, uh, these drivers. Let's uh, stay with this battle for a while. Uh, let's
as we have an incident there. Just uh, just saw that Rafarella and Nemanja Minolovic coming together and dropping down to seventh position for Arella and ninth for Manolovic if he can get out of the gravel tenth position that becomes he wants to rejoin safely of course uh, not sure what the reason was there but uh, Arella was behind Manolovic so there must be uh, must have been some kind of bump there uh, not, not so sure to apportion blame to that puts uh, two top drivers uh, a bit further down the field and oh Simon Fillingham getting onto the uh, onto the gravel there coming out of the fast sweeper and, and hitting the barrier so he keeps going but he lost some uh, some ground some time and down to 17th position so that uh, puts things in a different perspective there at the front we have uh, Horvat followed by Niri. Very, very closely. Niri is uh, edging closer in uh, in these stages of the race. Then we have Lucas and Peter Bakus. So Peter Bakus, by his consistency and his pace, gets up into P4 once again. I think he started in eighth position or, or a bit further up, but uh, he, uh, he gained some positions. That's uh, one of his strengths. He just keeps going, keeps setting good lap times and uh, well that pays off in the long run uh, that wins you championships that's, uh, that's the case really indeed getting closer and closer now within the within four tenths of a second uh, almost three tenths to robert horvat so uh, Let's have a look at that from this perspective. Now will Niri be patient and then just stay with him, try to pass him in the pit stops, which uh, will be coming in about uh, 10 minutes, or will he try to make a move very, very soon? close racing uh, behind as well it's our top six now within 10 seconds and then a bit of a gap to Daniel Batcock and uh, Greg Metcalf is even uh, 10 seconds down on that he's uh, battling with Max Haas let's uh, have a quick look at that Greg Metcalf defending from Max Haas I think both drivers were in uh, in the defending position for quite a while in the last few races Greg Taking the defensive line on the inside. Can Max go around the outside? Yes, he can. Wow, what a move. What a move by Max Haas. Going around the outside into the chicane. And uh, we have Minolovic right at the tail end of that, uh, that group there. But a very nice move by Max Haas. And I think David Dorn was trying to uh, get past there. It's Minolovic is trying to make up ground as soon as he can to get back into that top 10 he's on the inside now almost of David Torre Porsche getting out of the way that's Nedo Vili getting out of the way of uh, the front runners and Manolovic staying behind but uh, yeah, this is a nice pack of cars here in this shot Jas Forsberg, for example, is, is behind and he's being hit off by Peter Peck, leaving him no room but to, to go on the gravel. And down to 17th position. Martin Roslev or Torre now seems to be having a problem. People starting to make some mistakes. Torre waiting for his victim, Martin Roslev. So it seems that Gorda was at fault there for causing the collision. He lets Roslev back past and now he will have to let Struher pass too. It's not what he wanted probably. But uh, 18th position for the Belgian in his home Grand Prix. And as you could see, mistakes are easily made on your own or by uh, contact with other drivers. So uh, things 
will happen for sure. Neri still keeping over all of that honest. He, uh, he will be tired already from seeing that orange car in his rear view mirror. Not getting away from him, which, uh, which he did in the last few races. Uh, it seemed with ease, but uh, that's not, not the case, of course. He uh, has to work for it very, very hard. And Alejandro Forero in his first GTR3 race, if I'm not mistaken, in sixth position. That's uh, very, very good. You will see Pavlacek as well, having a good result for the moment. Fifth position. It's uh, very nice. Top two now, uh, starting to run away, starting to make a real gap to Lucas, Bacchus and the likes. <laughs> Trying to catch Pavo Moravik and catching him in a bad moment. Having a spin. Coming uh, into the um, hairpin. So we have now Ralph Arella, for example, in 19th position. What can he do from there? Can he get into the points? That, that will be his main goal, I think, for uh, for this race. Metcalf and Manonovic into the top 10 now. Max Haas in 8th, also very nice. He's 10 seconds behind Badcock. Let's, uh, let's see if that gap can close. Badcock is having a lonely race at the moment. And I, if I'm not mistaken, he, he had some of those before. Uh, running good pace, but not having anyone around him. Uh, which, is a, which is a bit weird in, in seventh spot. You would expect him uh, to have close battles. But uh, he's had a quiet few races uh, at some points. Still not close enough to make a move. Is now uh, up to one second the gap. So guys will start to struggle with tire grip as we end, as we uh, near the halfway point of the race. Welcome Sando Donadel to our chat. Seems Neri has some, some good sections in the track where he gets closer and closer to uh, to Horvat and then uh, it seems Horvat runs away a bit in the last sector. And they have a five second gap to, uh, to Lucas and Bacos who are also very very close together. Then Pavlacic and Forero also very close so uh, they're starting to be a bit of pairing between the drivers. Romania Manolovic making his way through the field. As we said, he's uh, following Greg Metcalf and passing Valentino Rossi in... Uh oh, Rossi! Going wide and I think collecting Greg Metcalf. Oh, that's that's a bad incident. Rossi losing control of the car and um, no Metcalf is still going. So he was he was uh, he was lucky. I was sure he was uh, taking Greg out. He's still in ninth position, so good for him. But uh, unfortunate incident by Rossi there. To, uh, to take out some of the top runners while uh, while being passed. Uh, that, that's also a tricky thing on this track, of course. To know where you can let faster guys pass because that's uh, that's far from easy in uh, in these uh, in these corners. So if Metcalf defending from Fillingham to. Uh, Two British drivers, and we have Roslev rounding up the top 15, swapping places with uh, 
with Dora now it seems is that just a timing glitch or yeah it seems like yeah that's a bit of a timing glitch because not really uh, lots going on here gap at the front now uh, over one second so uh, looks like Horvat has this under control for the moment Maybe trying to eke out that gap a bit more when um, to go into the pits. Let's have a look at this battle here. It's a five-way battle for ninth position. Oh, and, uh, there's been some drama behind Greg, it seems, and Greg and Simon. So the guys behind there dropped it back massively. We have Petr Peck in 11th. Moravec Hutnik also behind. So a bit of an incident there it seems. And Metcalf still defending. From Simon Fillingham. Now the pit stops are uh, will be will be interesting. There are some some cars that are a bit faster in the pit stop than others, so uh, we will have to see what happens there. Who dives in first? We are at the 32 minute mark, so uh, early stoppers will start to come in soon. As we see, David Dore is uh, one of the first guys into the pits. Yes, indeed. So he had a bit of an incident there and um, trying to capitalize on that by pitting early now and getting some maybe clean air. That uh, might be what he's looking for. Simon Fillingham being a bit slow there, getting passed by Moravec. Weird things going on here in this race. Uh, people slowing down for apparently no reason. Battles breaking up. Where's Metcalf? Metcalf down into 25th position. Mm, not sure if that can be true. Where is Metcalf? Oh, he's in the pits. So they had some kind of incident, but uh, people now getting into their pit stalls. We saw Greg Metcalf, Simon Fillingham, we have Morten Rosleff going into the pits. So it will be it will be interesting to see what happens, but none of the front runners are in the pits. Nope. They're coming up to uh, to the pits now. So let's see. Do they go straight? Robert Horvat goes into the pits and it's go time for Pavonier if he can set a good lap time here get a good entry into the pits and a good exit then he might be able to challenge Robert Horvat for the lead uh, and Robert has to have a good pit stop or he will uh, lose that lead and so it was very very close between them so if Pavel ends up in front it will be very difficult to pass that's that's for sure so uh, the whole standings uh, jumbling up at the moment, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get an overview of that in about five minutes when everybody did their pit stops. Pavel dive into the pits in this lap already or does he feel lucky and does he keep going? Alejandro Forero matching uh, the uh, 
top pace at the moment and Niri coming into the pits together with Vlastimil Lukas, Radek Pavlacek as well. Alejandro Ferrero keeps going. Uh, let's see uh, let's see what that will bring. Let's ride with Robert Horvat. He's coming down to the second chicane, breaking downhill. And uh, Miri is in the pits. Ferrero and Batko keep going. So Ferrero leading his first GTR3 race. Uh, that will be a nice feeling, even if it's virtual. So breaking for the hairpin. What's Niri's status? He's still up on the jacks, which is not a, not a big problem, of course. I've heard of that. Now going through the final chicane. Niri needs to get going now if he wants to uh, challenge Horvat for the lead. Still in his pit stall. Of course, you, you, you get, get back. Oh, and there he goes. But uh, that's Horvat already passed. And Vlastimil Lukas there behind all those buses, etc. Going out of the pits. There he is, Pavel Niri, down into 7th position, behind Bakos, behind Lukas. So uh, he lost out in the pits, unfortunately, and that gives a 10 second gap to Robert Horvat. Taking uh, Niri out of the equation means that we have a uh, actual standing of Horvat, followed by Lukas and then Bakos. Niri close, close behind and Pavlacek then behind him. So uh, still close for second spot, but uh, it seems Horvat did a good did a, did a good job in the pit stops and uh, got an advantage there. Of course, you always uh, like to see that advantage going to the f to the uh, chasing driver, but that was not the case here. So, Ferrero and Badcock now also in the pits. So, Robert Horvat will uh, take the lead of the race once again here on this lap. Puts in a 30.3, Lucas a 31.4, so one second quicker, and then a uh, 30.7 for Bacchus. So, he's closing up on Vlastimir Lucas. 30.7 as well for Niri. Oh, there's still some action going. Riding here with Nikolai Hartup. He's following Simon Fillingham and uh, followed by Shabot Albertini. So up and down the field, the battles are still raging on. So now it's a question for Horvat to uh, to keep his cool, manage that 10, even 11 second gap to uh, to Lucas behind and uh, and take that win. Now it's uh, that's easier said than done. As we saw, a difficult track, um, difficult conditions with uh, with drivers uh, being passed here in the later stages or the second half of the race. Uh, having to deal with traffic on this track is not easy. So uh, Horvat will have to be on his toes to not lose uh, any unnecessary time because uh, well, we saw him uh, 
throwing away a win at Silverstone in the first sprint race, for example. Uh, but after that he started winning and never stopped. So uh, at the moment it looks like he will be winning again at Zolder. But uh, it ain't over until the fat lady sings, as you know. Miri still trying to get close to Peter Bakus, our championship leader. And uh, as it stands, it's first and third for our championship leaders. Uh, not sure what the points implications will be and if Horvat will then take the, the lead from Bakus or not. We'll have to see that in, uh, in the stream in two weeks' time. Or on our website, of course. You can, uh, you can see the standings whenever we have uploaded the results, which is mostly one day or two days after the race. The standings are updated and, uh, and you can see the full evolution of the championship and the racing uh, events. Simon Fillingham is having an uh, eventful race. He's down in 17th position following his own teammate uh, and outside of the points. So that's... Uh, that's not great for the team. Let's see if uh, the Mercedes is, can get into the points. They have to get past uh, Hutnik, Forsberg, Roslev Dore. Well, those are all names that you uh, don't want to see in front of you. That's for sure. Uh, very difficult indeed. Now, Pavel Niri is, uh, is really starting to uh, harass Peter Bacchus now. Let's have a look. Can he make a move into the hairpin? Will Bacchus go defensive? Yes, he does. Breaking on the outside for the hairpin and getting a good run now. Is nearly but not good enough and we, we saw in the, the long straights of Road America and Spa for example that the BMW really has some legs in, uh, in the fast stuff, so Niri will have to hope for a mistake of Bakus, uh, I think, or, or go for a very late lunch, count on, uh, on his cooperation, but uh, Bakus, uh, I know as a driver he's uh, firstly very consistent when he's focused, and uh, he looks like he's really focused now. And he's, he's hard to pass, he doesn't make, uh, make a lot of mistakes, so uh, fast and consistent, that's, uh, that's what you want to win championships. And he knows he has to try and lose as many points as possible to Horvat. Oh, late breaking there by Horvat, but, uh, by Bakus, but he keeps it tidy through the chicane. Oh, lots of chat. So yeah, everybody has uh, has spitted now. Sorry for seeing that so late. Greg indeed had an uh, an accident with. Uh, uh, I'm not sure with who. Maybe with uh, with Simon filling him. He was close uh, close with Simon uh, in any case. And at the, at the top end of the field, we see Horvat. Increasing the gap to Lucas now to uh, 13 and a half seconds. Niri looking very, very good here around this track. Very uh, nice lines, hitting all those apexes. And this car turns in very, very nicely. That, that's for sure. It's nice to watch. Bouncing over those curbs. And Radek Pavlacek behind. He's uh, he's enjoying this. He's a 
coming closer and closer to this battle. Maybe uh, he wants to join in. Meanwhile, Lucas has a five second gap to Bacchus, so that's looking, uh, looking quite good. Can he make a move? He goes for the inside, but he has to uh, opt out of it and back onto the main straight. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to see if he can get past. He's in the slipstream now, but the McLaren is not the fastest on the straights, so very frustrating that must be for Niri at the moment. Let's have a quick look at Ralph Arella and Simon Fillingham trying to get back into those points paying positions. They're following Pavel Hutnik now very closely. And that would only put Ralph Arella in the top 15 so uh, they need to pass uh, Forsberg as well to both get into the points. hit from behind from Pavel into Bagus so he's getting a bit impatient now and uh, well you can't really blame him there's no way past the big M6 it is big it is wide and on this track that's all you need good pace consistency and as a third uh, trait it's uh, good car placement and with good car placement in my opinion, on this track, you can defend from almost any move. So, uh, mark my words. Seems to be something wrong with the timing and scoring. Uh, Simon Fillingham showing up in the top 10 from time to time. Bit weird, but uh, he's still in 18th position now, so he's passed by Albertini. That's uh, something we didn't catch, so a uh, mistake or an incident for Simon Fillingham. He's now uh, passed by Robert Horvath, so lapped. Oh, and onto the grass. Not sure. I think uh, Simon has a has a big problem with his car braking. Oh, that was bad by I think Hartup or May just running across the nose of uh, Fillingham. And Fillingham uh, being the gentleman that he is, trying to wait for his victim. And here are the leaders coming past. So can. Niri take advantage of those lapped cars in front get out of the way quite quickly so not, not really a factor there for the McLaren driver and here's Pavlacek another McLaren so as I have predicted working well here on uh, this track the McLarens Manolovic is also still crawling back up the field. He's behind Petr Peck for a spot in the top 10. Mm, on the inside of Petr Peck. Give each other some room, guys. Oh, that's... Out on the limit, some pain trading. But Manolovic gets through for 10th position, mm, staying on the middle of the track, trying to defend. Oh, 
though he's just barely able to turn in and keep his position but uh, up to p10 for manolovic uh, on the limit move there side by side some uh, some door banging but nothing major they have door very closely behind so uh, we'll have to see <laughs> what happens there Very, very wide by Niri. He's really trying to push the boundaries there and uh, going over the limit. Will for sure, not help him to get past Peter Bakus. And that brings Radek Pavlacek a little bit closer once again. Pavlacic struggling with this car at the beginning of the season but now it seems he's uh, starting to get used to it, starting to get to grips with it and uh, being uh, well up in that top 10 where we expect him to be. So uh, that's one of the important factors in this series. As you can see on the left we have all the different tire, uh, tire all the different car makes that our R3E is uh, offering except for the Camaro because it was really uh, not balanced but uh, nearly trying the over under selling the dummy to Bacos is in front Bacos door banging still he gets back through oh that will be heartbreaking for Niri and can Pavlacek now go for the inside wisely opts against it but uh, there was an opportunity there uh, and I think Niri found found a way to, uh, to get under Bacchus' skin and try to make a pass for third spot let's see if he can uh, try that again as we see Arella and Forsberg trading places for 15th position Eleven minutes of racing to go. another one of those moves uh, he's not close enough he, he sold the dummy here on the main straight to Bacchus and he, he fell for it which uh, put him on the inside for turn one but he couldn't really capitalize on it good recovering from Bacchus there for sure let's uh, have a look at him different kind of a battle Thomas Struhai following Max Haas in 19th spot oh, no he's uh, he's being passed sorry he's right there with Aaron May here is Aaron right behind Thomas Struhai we're side by side there through the first sector Corvette versus BMW. That's for 20th position after 50 minutes of racing, so uh, you can't say it's not close. It's th there's there's a um, a level here for everyone. There's a really really fast guys like Corvette. Uh, Lucas, Bacchus, Niri, etc. So that, that top five, let's say. Then there's a whole bunch of really solid sim racers um, making up almost the rest of the field. And then even for the, the slower guys, 
there's always some good racing to be had. So uh, there's nothing holding you back from joining us at rrleaks.com to get racing with us. Let's go back to that epic battle here for the podium spots. In the end I can still see Pavlacek uh, taking that third podium spot if they're not careful up front. I will uh, quickly leave you with this battle. I will return in about a minute. Good run for Nieri. A bit of a slide by Bacchus there into the last turn. Uh, can Nieri go around the outside? That will put him on the inside. Yes, he's already passed. I wanted to say he's then on the inside for the second turn, which was a problem in his first attempt. Uh, as we can see, Bacchus starting to struggle with the tires. Oh, almost turning in there. Almost turning in on Yiri. But uh, no accident there. So Niri finally up to P3. Well deserved. Very nice move capitalizing on that one mistake that Peter Bacchus made in this race at the moment. So uh, can Bacchus hold on to his fourth spot? Uh, I think Niri will uh, will get away. I think he has the pace to be faster than uh, than Bacchus, so uh, I don't think he will see him again. With seven minutes to go, it's uh, Pavlacek versus Bacchus for fourth position. David Dore is very close as well to Petr Pek for eleventh spot. That's uh, one to watch, and then we have a uh, nice battle right behind here three-way battles Forsberg, Hutnik and Roslev for uh, those final points paying positions Ralph Arella is 10 seconds behind those guys so uh, they can uh, can have their fun we have a Porsche we have an Audi and we have a BMW so, um, well, Battle of the German car makes. Pavlacek got past Bacchus. Sorry, we uh, we missed that, but here you can see it. The two McLarens getting past Bacchus in uh, in a battle lap. I think he also made a move into turn one. So uh, Bacchus down to fifth spot, and um, if I'm not mistaken, that will mean that. Bacchus will lose the lead of the driver's championship um, and uh, Manolovic is in 10th well they will still score some good team points will not uh, not cause them any harm in the team's championship but uh, with five minutes to go still some very important position changes we haven't talked about our race leader for quite a while it's Robert Horvath once again going very very wide he needs to be careful still focus for about four laps I would say three three or four laps here um, that he needs to finish so uh, again uh, actually a very dominant performance he led a, he lost the lead in the first corner retook it immediately and uh, then dealt with Pavel Niri's pressure for, for about 10 to 15 minutes and started to eke out that gap and uh, make the difference in the pit stops. Uh, took that 10 second gap after the pit stops to, uh, to Lucas and now uh, increased that to 16 seconds. So 
Well, nothing to uh, nothing to add to that. Very solid driving by Robert Horvat. And uh, the only thing that he has to do is keep it on the track now and manage that traffic uh, in the best way possible. Forsberg for his home race in 12th position. Can he get past Petr Peck in the Nissan GTR? That is uh, the question on everybody's lips. As it has come to my attention that uh, Greg Metcalf, I think, has retired from the race due to an incident with Valentino Rossi. Godzilla here is uh, might be an ideal car to uh, to defend. It's very wide, very heavy, and good in a straight line. So uh, it's possible to keep that Audi behind, but ooh, very very close there. Not the greatest of runs out of that chicane for Petr Peck, and that puts David Dor on the inside for the hairpin. Can he get his braking done in a good fashion? Turns in. They're still side by side. Oh, <laughs> even some uh, some door banging there. But Peter Peck still on the inside, and David Dora let him back past. Uh, it seems because he's quite a long way behind now. All of a sudden, so that's weird. And once again, <laughs> David Dora is missing a front light. Uh, I don't know how he does it. He uh, has been missing a front light for every single race he has raced it in this uh, championship. As we are nearing the end we also have Jazz Forsberg versus Morten Rosleff and Ralph Arella finally made it up into the top 15 to take some points for uh, his racing team with Simon Fillingham. This is the closest battle on track at the moment. And did I just miss? Just so looking at my other screen, I think Forsberg was behind Roslev, if I'm not mistaken. It's uh, getting a bit late. But uh, yeah, quite sure that was the case. And it, it looked like Roslev just let him through. There was no real, uh, real passing uh, there. So I'm not sure why. Because with mon one minute to go, I'm quite sure Roslev would defend. So maybe running uh, low on fuel. That could be the case. Trying to uh, be lapped by the race leader who is right behind him to do uh, one less lap and still make it with his uh, current fuel load, not having to do a splash and dash, which will. Uh, lose him several spots and uh, and some points. Uh, Dore getting past Petr Peck now as well up into 11 so a good end to this race for David Dore at his home uh, home circuit and Peter Bakus he's, uh, he's not hanging back from Radek Pavlacek uh, not sure if he will be able to pass him but uh, that will have to be seen. We have 30 seconds to go and we have Bakus finishing up the first sector. So he will uh, finish the race at the end of this lap. As I said uh, five minutes ago, dominant performance by Horvat. Once again, taking the maximum amount of points and uh, points for pole position as well so uh, very good performance in the Mercedes AMG Roslev moves aside to let the leader pass and probably make it on his fuel load and uh, Robert Horvat taking uh, a win once again let's uh, see where this ends can 
Olympiacos turn that tide and, and start winning again or finishing in front of uh, Horvat in the next few races at Portimao, at uh, the Nordschleife and at Zandvoort, uh, or will that not be the case? So that's the end of the race for Robert Horvat. Vlastimil Lukas will finish in second position. Solid race for him. Kept his cool in the opening stages and uh, emerged in second position after the pit stops. Then Pavel Nieri needs no introduction. He uh, won race one at the Silverstone circuit, so uh, the one where Robert Horvat crashed out. Third position for him, Radek Pavlacek in fourth Peter Bakus in uh, fifth position, already starting to do some donuts, which he doesn't seem to be uh, making to work. Alejandro Ferrero finishing sixth in his first GTR3 race. Very nice performance for him. Max Haas, another nice result. Seventh position for him. Daniel Batcock, eighth position. Very nice indeed. Not too far back is uh, Pavel Moravec, so in, in the end he didn't have a lonely race. Pavel Moravec in ninth, rounding up the top ten, Nemanja Manolovic after another recovery drive. He had a couple of those in uh, this season. David Dore, as we saw, just in front of Petr Peck. Yes, he stays in front. 11th for Dore, 12th for Petr Peck. Then we have Jas Forsberg in 13th. Morten Roslev has already uh, passed the finish line in 14th. Ralph Varela finished 15th. Schaubert Albertini in 16th. Simon Finningham in 17th, still managing to finish the race. Thomas Struhar in 18th. And here are those full results. Aran May in 19th position. Ross Hockey in 20th. Nikolai Hartup in 21st. And Paul Hudson in 22nd. And now we have the non-finishers. Uh, which are Pavel Hutnik, Nedo, Vili, Greg Metcalf, Valentino Rossi and Stefan Riedel already retiring from the race in the opening stages. So that was it for this Zolder race. Um, very nice to uh, have you as a viewer and as a reminder just uh, hit subscribe hit that bell to get notifications of our future streams of uh, this racing series at rrleagues.com and then just uh, make sure to visit our website visit our facebook page youtube etc to uh, to follow up on what we are doing if you just want to watch feel free if you want to join us get to our website and uh, sign up for one of our four official series or just join us in the race club on thursday evenings uh, every two weeks um, that was it for me see you in two weeks time at Portimao in Portugal for the sixth round of this championship have a good evening and uh, see you later